Aimlisted Autac Resources is an exploration and development company. Its flagship asset is a 1.3 million ounce gold project in Slovakia. It's recently benefited, though, from added interest in its holdings in a copper project in Zambia called Zamzort. Vasilios Corellis is Autac's chief executive, and he joins us now. Vasilios, welcome. Good, good day, thank you. Uh, before we take a look at um, some of the uh, individual moving parts, if you like, what is Autac Resources? Well, we, we, we started off with a, a primary asset, which is our flagship uh, project in Slovakia. Um, and, and subsequent to that, in the, over the last couple of years, we've uh, made investments in, in other companies. Um, one has been obviously Zamsort, which is the most recent one, which you've just mentioned, um, which is copper and cobalt in the copper belt, in the new part of the copper belt. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, um, we also invested in a, in a private company that's uh, exploring um, in Eritrea. Let's start off with the Slovakian uh, gold asset. Where are you along the path uh, to ultimate production, presumably? Okay, yeah, well, we've um, taken the project through the various uh, phases that you do. Um, so we've done a, a scoping study, we did the resource scoping study, pre-feasibility study. We've actually recently updated the pre-feasibility study internally to reflect the, the current market conditions. Uh, and where we are at the, pro at the moment is we, we've come to the realization that to move things forward, um, this project has to go at its own pace and then else we have to get low local buy-in as well and, and that's what we're doing you know at the moment on the project is, is, is working away behind the scenes to get some local interest to move the project to the next stage. How difficult is that given the political backdrop and indeed of course the commodity backdrop as well which of course makes it so much more difficult for small companies like yourselves without the added advantage of having lots of real uh, money coming in from other areas? That's right I mean it, it is a challenge um, you know and, and we're not going to uh, you know hide behind that um, but at the same time um, therein lies the opportunity and uh, so we've been talking to a group now for you know just under a year now um, and they're doing their due diligence and you know getting you know getting to know the project and the economics and and even at these numbers um, and the current market where the gold price is at the moment I mean the project still makes uh, 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 generates a lot of revenue um, so we think that you know certainly in the medium to long term the you know the, the project stands up in the current market. What about, uh, what about Zamsort in Zambia? Because um, this is where a lot of the headlines have come through, of course, recently. And in fact, anybody that follows the share price, um, albeit beaten up as it is, uh, bearing in mind where you've come from, but the big gain in shares over that last couple of weeks or so when you had added investment uh, in your copper project in Zambia. That's right. I mean, um, you know, part of the strategy in, in divesting and investing in other projects w was to invest in, 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 in companies and regions where we felt that there would be follow-on investment, whether it was us or it was somewhere else. And, and Zamsort is, is a typical example where um, we came in, we in effect rescued the company, um, and as a result of that, um, we, we got a, a, a decent position in a, in a fantastic jurisdiction with um, elephant-sized potential as far as the project's concerned, um, which you know is going into production. Um, so they, you know, Zamsort are trying to get some small-scale production uh, going, which was you know what they've been. Uh, wanting to do since we've invested in them and as a result of that they've been able to attract a, a local investment and Kapara investments have invested and more recently there, there seems to be another group um, that's doing their due diligence now to, to invest and you know all these investments have come in at uh, you know uh, multiples of, of what we put our money in terms of valuation so you know from that point of view we, we're quite happy that uh, that, that investment has turned out quite well. You mentioned their uh, production uh, my understanding is that of all the assets you hold within Autec uh, that that is the one that's going to come online first. Well, yes, uh, you know, it, it's it, you know they, they have been mining um, intermittently for the last ten years, and uh, they've recently got their mining license renewed. But the government has told them that they have to professionalise the operation. So as we speak, um, we've got people on the ground um, that are going through the phases of uh, getting setting up a little plant, and you know I'll be going out towards the end of the month to help move that forward. So they've set themselves quite an aggressive timeline, and uh, so we you know we're doing our best to achieve that. Mm. Uh, what about Eritrea? Yeah, I mean, uh, Eritrea, the, the company that we've invested in um, is, is, you know, their, their license area sits approximately uh, 20 to 50 kilometers south of a company called Nefsan Resources, which is developing the Bisha mine. You might have heard of that. Um, and uh, more recently, uh, Bisha made a discovery called the Ashele Discovery, which is actually 20 kilometers down strike from Andy Armour's recent discovery called Hoba. Uh, and again, um, you know, we put in our money, and uh, there's been some follow-up money with a, in the form of a joint venture in, the, in this instance. And um, as a result of that, they've made a new discovery. 
Um, I believe they'll be commencing drilling operations again um, after the rainy season now in November. So yeah, you know, both projects there's activity. Yeah. Um, uh, given uh, we knew you were coming on, we, we spoke to some clients that the fact you were in and they, and they came up with some questions. And just to quickly run through some of these, given the commodity um, environment, uh, the, one of the repeated questions seems to be, was it wise to go into other areas where you had this flagship asset, this gold asset in Slovakia? Why go to other areas? In part, you've answered that. But as, as a small company, you have limited resources. That, that, that's true. Um, but at the same time, we, we're seeing opportunities um, in this market that as a small company we would never ever have the opportunity to look at and so uh, yes it, it, there is a risk in, in, in diversifying and, and spreading yourself thin but you know in, 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 in the medium to long term I think it's going to add a lot of value because some of the, I mean you know both these projects are you know potentially our world class yeah and uh, that, that's was really the rationale. What, what about um, the, the point as well that's made about where the, the geographical location of these, the political uncertainty, should we say, in some of these areas? How do you get around that? How do you minimise the risk, um, the political risk that it comes with some of these, uh, these resources? I, I think if you look at the resource sector, I think most of the resource sector is generally in areas where there is some uh, political instability. Um, but you know, where I see that is that we've got a diverse range of projects in, 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 in different jurisdictions where you've got the stability of Europe um, versus the elephant-sized potential of projects in Africa, and I think that's quite a good balance to have. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, um, the, the, the long-term investment in Ortec, uh, we're speaking to people that have been in Ortec a while, and they've seen a, a lot of dilution, a lot of um, share price erosion. What do you say to those people that are standing by you, uh, and uh, with the share price that it is, having seen it where it was? No, I mean, we, we share the pain. Um, you know, if, if you look at Ortec from its inception when, we, when it was listed back in 2011, um, the directors and, and to some extent the management have participated in every single fundraising. Not that there have been many, there have been three fundraisings and we've, uh, or four, we've participated and, and, and maintained our position. So, you, you know, likewise, if with every placing that we've done, the board has generally, you know, held their position. And today, I think we, we earn, still got about 10% of the company. Um, the board, and so from that point of view, we've in effect put put our money, you know, where our mouth is. Mm. Um, in, in terms of uh, where the company is going, um, th this this point about vicious uh, shareholder dilution comes up again and again and again. But in terms of the uh, advantage you got in your Zambian asset, you talk about production next year, you talk about the companies wanting to buy in. Is that something you see continuing which is going to bolster the share price? What do you say about the share price? Well, yeah, I mean, sure, uh, you know, uh, we, we have to, um, I suppose we, we're responding to what the market wants. I mean, the market's gone through a phase where um, the shareholders have been demanding production and dividends and, and, and so as a board you, you, you try to react and try to respond in, in, in that vein. Um, certainly, uh, you know, Zamsort is, is, is the one that's nearest to being in production and, you know, it's going to be small scale production initially. Um, but they do have um, the scope to, to grow that production with a little bit more work on the ground. And, um, you know, in, in the short term, yes, there, there's a bit of pain, but in, in, in the medium to long term, I think these assets are, are world-class assets. And so, although we, we've seen a lot of erosion, I think when the cycle returns, um, you know, hopefully that'll come back. I mean, if we look at even the majors, I mean, they, they're at all-time lows. I mean, yeah, they haven't seen these sort of lows in 10, 20 years. So, you know, I don't think it's company specific or sector specific. I think it's just a general cycle that we've gone through. And it's, it's quite been quite a deep cycle. Um, but hopefully, I mean, I think when you're seeing activity as we're seeing now in the space, it usually signals that this is the bottom of the market. And this is where companies are made. Um, you know, and this is where, you know, you know management teams and, and, and boards making the right decisions for the right projects in two, three years' time, you know, they look like the geniuses. Mm. Well, let's look at the next two or three years between now and, and, that, and that point and ask you the question about what do you see as the trigger points to create shareholder value from, from this company? Well, obviously, um, growing resources. I mean, I'm still a, a believer that a, a junior company is there to, to create capital growth, and I think you do that through, uh, you know, finding at these assets and developing them to a point where you, you get taken out so um, you know even within these cycles you see that time and time again you know good projects will get taken out and and so from a you know, from a capital point of view I think that's where I see um, you know or tax growth coming is in, 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 in the equity is actually you know developing these assets where it does start getting interest from some of the majors and you know we look we're taking a two to three year view as well 
uh, will you be having to put much money into the company to pro pro progress these assets? Or like the Zamsort asset, do you see more companies coming in and wanting a share of it to well, help you with that? We, we do. I mean, um, you know, I think, for example, Zamsort, um, we, we've seen um, money being raised and we've seen, we've seen continued interest from other players in the region wanting to a, a slice of the cake. And so from that point of view, it's quite gratifying that we've actually uh, seeing that, although it's, it's not something that uh, you know one would expect, you know you, you get any um, reward for in this market. But certainly, in you know in the next year or two, I would expect to see some value coming out from that. Mm. Um, timeline as well for the Slovakian asset. What are your what's in your intro? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's an asset that you know will evolve at its own pace. And but as I said, you know, we, we are working towards getting a strategic local partner involved. And if we can get that, then um, you know, I'm not sure what the timeline would be. It would really be up to them. But you know, there, there's also political considerations that one has to take into account with these sorts of projects yeah. in, in uh, those jurisdictions. The, the other thing, going back to your website, just just to finish off the interview, you say on your website your exploration and development. Do you see yourself as a producer at at any point, or do you want to sell out before then? Um, it, junior companies are, you know, as I said, I mean, sometimes. I mean, my, my background is production, so I started my career on the mines, so I'm not afraid of it. Um, and to be honest with you, when we started with Slovakia, it was orientated towards that. It was about you know, bringing this project, going through the phases and, 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 and bringing it into production. So I'm not afraid of production. Uh, do I think that uh, junior companies should be pr doing production? It's up to the management team. Um, you really got to put the man, you know, the, sometimes good exploration geologists don't actually make good mining uh, uh, operators. Yeah. And so, you know, and I think you know, that, that, that's where you are. It's really up to the management team. Yeah. Uh, and bringing in the right resources at the right time to develop those assets. Well, look, we look forward to some more good news about Zamsort and yep. uh, more yep. progress to the company. Great, thank you very but, much. But uh, Vasilis, thanks indeed uh, there for joining us. That's Vasilis Corellis. He's the Chief Executive of Alltech Resources.